GoPro 7 and GoPro, GoPro 5, uh, Hero 5 and Hero 7. And that's my videography. And then Windows Movie Maker is my, my editing software, right? So it's pretty Spartan. And then the sounds you're hearing are from this thing through my, you know, awesome guitars and stuff that I have. So I understand the limitations I'm getting, but I'm working my way up to getting better stuff. But I would like to make sure that before I invest more into, you know, my music or whatever, that I'm, you know, producing stuff that when it comes out, it's like it, it creates a buzz. It, it, it People watch it and they like it and whatever. Now, on an extremely tight budget, you can do a lot with little. You know, it's always the case, the more you know, the less you need. But there's also that problem of just limitations of what you're going to hit. You know what I mean? Like, you're, you're not going to get, you know, uh, a high budget, high quality, you know, Hollywood kind of production on extreme shoestring budgets. You're just not, it just doesn't happen. And I know there's a lot of people say, oh, well, I recorded this on this really cheap uh, 1972, whatever, and everything sounded great. It probably didn't. <laughs> the song was probably really good, but it probably didn't sound that great when you really compare it and critique it, you know, uh, to, you know, what you could produce today. And again, you can do a lot with little, so use that to get your ideas down, uh, down, 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 done, <laughs> you know what I mean? Use that instead. But uh, if you're going to get into making studio, uh, getting studio equipment, you could see YouTuber after YouTuber after YouTuber after YouTuber spending $100 to save 10. They bought 10 different mics over a couple of years. They used two. <laughs> you know what I mean? But there's a lot of guys out there that have done that, made those, uh, you know, spend the $100 to save 10. And it's like, okay, yeah, here's the... Here's the mics that you should probably start with because... You know, you know, like people buy, and it, it's the same with guitars. Like they buy ten of the same guitar, expecting a different result, right? Here's the the five hundred dollar guitar, but here's the other five hundred dollar guitar that's better than the other five hundred dollar guitar. And there really, there's not that much difference. Well, mics are the same thing, pretty much. Whatever the price range they're in, uh, I did a video on mics yesterday. The price range they're in, they're they're all like, uh, for example, I have the SM57 and SM58. Now. In the price range of the SM58, any other brand is not much better or worse than them. So it really doesn't matter at the low end which one you buy. They're all going to probably do about the same job. You know, some might critique, oh, this does a little bit better at this, this does a little better at that. But at the end of the day, they kind of do the same job. Uh, but people go to the other thing. They go buy this mic because it was really expensive and they think it's the good, but it's not the tool for the job. Right, and when you're doing uh, any sort of a uh, studio, you really, really have to buy the tool to the job. I mean, if you can get one tool that does everything like this, it's great. But then, it's limited technology because you can't upgrade it, right? So you have to stay within the the confines of what it can do, which again is still a quite a bit. It's still a quite a bit. But that said, once you start getting into more modern stuff, uh the studios get expensive really really fast it's not just about having a computer program and, and a audio interface there's there's way more to it than that you know if you really want to get you know the more internal you go the more digital you go the easier it is because you can you know cut out a lot of stuff i mean there's a lot of guitar players on youtube that don't have guitar amps you know because they just don't need them everything's you know on on the computer uh so if you already have that work with it right and then you know study of what you really need and the best way to figure out what you're going to need and what you don't need is to go to an actual studio now i've only ever been in uh, two or three studios uh i've seen the, the one was called the sound of uh, one hand studios <clears throat> i guess it was a, a rush kind of <coughs> spin-off uh but um uh that was like as spart as you could possibly it, it was literally you know a booth and it was like two rooms it was it was it was the smallest uh but it was cheap it was like 15 bucks an hour and my buddy and i went there and he recorded i didn't but i went with him and i saw what the process was and at the time it was older consoles and stuff like that it wasn't digital yet uh, the, the next one i went to was like a multi-million dollar studio and i did a tour of it 
and it was Raven Street Studios in Ottawa. Like th th that was about as high production as studio as you could get. But they got like government contracts. They got you know very you know commercials and stuff like. That. So they had like you know full sound engineer, seventy two channel boards, and you know m you know like the state of the art, state of the art, state of the art, right? And again, that was back in the nineties. So you looked at what it cost to go there and you look at what it costs to go there. Now you go there to a place like that, where you're dealing with engineers that'll say, buy this, don't buy that. Uh, because this will work. You're just wasting your money on that. You can get more for less, you know, and then you got the other guy that just buy the cheapest of everything and that'll be just good enough. It doesn't matter what you buy. And I disagree with that philosophy a hundred percent because it does matter what you buy. Uh, you know, mics have character, speakers have character and tool to the job. You know what I mean? So it's not about the money as much as the, that you're throwing the money in the right direction, right? So for me to upgrade from this is a really one of those things that what I'm focusing on is having all the tools I need in the studio, the guitars, the basses, the drums, uh, drums is the next thing. And then maybe keyboards. And after that, I got violins and mandolins and stuff like that too. Uh, so for me, I'm focusing on the instrument act, um, angle of it. I can live with this for, well, until it burns out on me or whatever, uh, you know, considering how old it is. I mean, it's, it's a pretty, you know, 2006, it was a long time ago. Uh, but the thing I, I, I'm noticing is that I'm also getting a lot of, you know, on, if you want to say it on the cheap, I'm getting a lot of, you know, how to record, you know, how uh, the vocals is the thing I'm having the most. Guitars, I, I think I got down pretty good. The bass, I got down pretty good. The drums, I don't have experience with the drums yet because I don't have my own drum kit. But once I do, you know, and the nice thing is, is one thing that exists nowadays that didn't exist back when I bought this is all like YouTube uh, hadn't even started yet when it, you know, it was, this was like a year before YouTube started. I think they started in 2007 or something like that. So, I mean, you know, don't quote me on, but it was pretty much just before that. Right. And now you can get all kinds of tutorials on how to set up mics on drums and how to set up mics on guitar amps and, and how to record vocals properly and stuff like that and how to do it on a budget. And you, you know, always best to work with what you got, right? And produce the best you can. But at the end of the day, if you really want that perfect, perfect uh, uh, production, I'm going to go with what uh, Frederico from uh, Frozen Crown was saying in, in one of his interviews about, you know, like, don't try to do it all yourself. You know, like, save up some money, go to a studio, pay somebody who's, you know, got years and years and years of experience. And you're not necessarily going to be a student there, but you, you know, be observant when you're in the recording process of how they're doing things so that you have a reference point of where to start. Save yourself a lot of trial and error so you can get the most out of something like this, right? And once you do that, and there's a lot of things I've learned over the years of what works and what doesn't, uh, double tracking my guitars, you know, just something as simple as double tracking my guitars. Uh, I only started doing that last year. You know, because, you know, uh, as listening to another YouTuber, Berenth, who's, you know, he started talking, and, and of course, uh, you know, Spectre Studios and stuff like that with Glenn and other, you know, other studio guys are saying, yeah, always double track your guitars, especially for metal, right? And double tracking vocals and stuff like that. Suddenly, once you start knowing about that stuff, you when you listen to music, the next thing you, you notice is that you start to hear more things in songs. It's like, oh, they did this. Oh, there's three vocals there instead of just one. Uh, and how they get the second vocal in there without it being intrusive, right? You know, like the first vocal's right on the mic, uh, the second vocal's a foot back. And it's, you know what I mean? It's, it's neat how they do stuff like that because it, it just makes things sound bigger and, and more full without uh, being obvious, right? And it just makes it sound better. But then that's when you start coming up to limitations of your equipment. If you have a 12 channel recorder and you really can only use 10 tracks because this has to be for the bounce track, which is basically all these tracks go onto this so you can mix it down. 
uh, you run out of you run out of room really quick. One neat thing about this is it has 192 virtual tracks, which means uh, let's say I take uh, just these two tracks here, and I want to add a triangle. Well, I can do that 192 times on the on these two channels here. So I can you know use a uh, or, or maybe not quite that much on one channel, but I can I can add extra instruments per. So let's say I got the guitar here, the second double track guitar here, the lead guitar here, the bass here, and the drum here is all, uh, also to this is, uh, really I got eight tracks or, or yeah, whatever. Because this here also is a, um, where you put the drum machine, right? So this is actually two tracks right here. So this is two tracks, this is two tracks, and then you got eight tracks that you could use. Uh, now the thing about that is, you run out of tracks and if you use the virtual tracks you have to get the volume match perfectly because you can't separate the 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 two things so let's say i put a guitar and a mandolin on uh these two tracks here they have to be at the same volume because i can't adjust it after like after i record it if one's louder than the other too bad you know what i mean so that's a limitation where if you had an extra row of faders you could you could control it a bit better so that's what I mean by like running up against limitations and stuff. So when you start learning that, that you can't do everything with what you have, you have to start to find other solutions. And there's solutions is not just about always throwing money at stuff because sometimes that's not the solution. 